you know, you wanted to keep the submariners uh, happy and keep their morale up. George, you know, Sacco being Sicilian, uh, he made pizza on Friday nights just because it's what Sicilians do. And uh, I had to ask him, I said, how the heck did you get, you know, ingredients through the Navy supply system? And he said it was a challenge. Uh, and, you know, in, in 1944, there aren't a whole lot of Italians in, in uh, Australia. So there wasn't, you know, the infrastructure to supply pepperoni and that. Uh, by the way, after the war, a lot of Italians emigrate to, to uh, Australia. So it's not the challenge it was for him, but he said he had to make some sub substitutions, and that's all he would say. But Friday nights he made pizza, and for a lot of the COD crew, it was their first experience with pizza. I mean, think about America, you know, before World War II. I mean, we were very, very uh, uh, segmented in ethnic, ethnic mm -hmm. neighborhoods. So if you didn't grow up in a big city or near an Italian neighborhood, you didn't know what pizza was. And a lot of the guys, this was their first pizza. So Friday night, he's going through the boat with his tray of pizza. And if you complained about the food, he passed by you. Yeah, that's, he told me. And then some of the guys said, yeah. He said, somebody made a comment about something, just a joke. And George went by with the pizza. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I mean, uh, uh, you know, you, the... Here in the, in the dining room, uh, cruise mess, you've got 24 tables. Um, the first uh, uh, setting is the ongoing watch. The guy's going to be on duty for the next four hours. You're expected to eat in about eight or ten minutes. Nobody's lingering. And, of course, there in the doorway to cruise berthing, you've got the guys waiting for somebody to finish eating and make a space available. Uh, the mess cranks, the guys that haven't qualified, they're setting the new plates down. They're taking the mm -hmm. old dishes and washing them here. And with about three rotations, everybody's fed. And then, you know, you clear the tables and it's available as a recreation space. I can tell you about Cod's ice cream machine. We start the war with basically a, a home unit in the forward torpedo room. And Was that built into the ship or did somebody... All I know is it was a home unit that was a maintenance nightmare. Okay. Now, our engineering officer, Frank Kimball, told me that he had to maintain it. Mm -hmm. And there were two things that he absolutely hated aboard COD. The pit sword, mm -hmm. which was always breaking and causing maintenance nightmares so much. And they couldn't get new units. They got refurbished units uh, for refits after a patrol. In fact, Frank mentioned that he said he was looking forward to victory Mm -hmm. so that he can take the pit sword home and put it on his front lawn and watch the neighborhood dogs relieve themselves on it, <laughs> which, okay, if, you know, that's, that's how you maintain those things, uh, But and the ice cream machine. So he's very excited when later in the war, uh, Cod and, and most of the other fleet subs get the Lang Sherman ice cream maker, which is just outside uh, the doorway here in crew berthing. Now, this is an ice cream machine that's uh, specifically designed for service on a fleet boat. So the basic unit is it's roughly the size of uh, one of our batteries, but it'll fit down uh, a hatchway. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a, uh, um, a compressor fan unit that unbolts that you have to then rebolt. Um, and, of course, the ice cream maker is used. Uh, uh, it's, it's not milk and sugar. It's not briars. Um, it's, uh, there was a, 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 a liquid mix you would pour in the top. It, they called it Avocet. Uh, I'm not sure if that's the actual correct name, but it's a mix, and it came in chocolate, vanilla, and strawberry. And you would pour it in, and it's a refrigerated uh, cylinder. And as it freezes, there's scrapers that scrape it, and, you know, it solidifies. And then when it's done, you take the lid off the top, and you dispense kind of a gooey, soft-serve that tasted like whatever flavor you put in there plus some hydraulic fluid. Mm. But it's ice cream. It's close enough to ice cream, and they loved it. Um, there's a fascinating story about uh, how when Cod was based out of Fremantle, um, again, there was a supply uh, chain glitch. There wasn't enough of the mix available, and we might have had uh, 10 cases for a patrol, but there were only two. And it was so important that the supply officer demanded that uh, before they depart uh, uh, Allied territory, you know, you come up the coast of Australia and, and stop at a refueling depot near Darwin, um, 
that they said, well, we'll, we'll have Avocet ready for you at the dock when you come in for fuel before you leave and enter enemy territory. Well, the poor guy with the truck of Avocet is enduring several air attacks before COD comes up and um, there is, you know, 10 times more Avocet than we need. So they're offloading it, and this guy is helping, and, and he's probably, you know, uh, he had some PTSD as a result of uh, enduring these air attacks. But they're running out of space below decks where to stow the stuff. Mm -hmm. And so the decision was made, just take the boxes and store them on top of the deck. And Cod's departing, and this guy is waving, and the guy said, what are we going to do with all that I said, and, and our officers said, just leave it there. And when they cleared the harbor, they dove and did some quick maneuvers. So uh, somewhere uh, in the shallow littorals of northern Australia are some Avocet cases. <laughs> Probably some very fat fish around there. <laughs> but, uh, you know, food is, uh, uh, you know, the Army travels on its stomach, and I think the Navy uh, does the same. Um, you know, we, uh, uh, we're... we're we're glad that we were able to talk to at least one of our cooks, uh, again, George Sacco, and uh, we're uh, in touch with the families of some of our others, but uh, unfortunately nothing beats talking to the guy that actually was flipping the burgers. <laughs> Interestingly enough, in our uh, galley, George uh, uh, never came aboard the cod while I was here. Mm -hmm. We talked for hours on the phone, and, uh, and he, he did tell me that in the uh, forward end of the uh, galley, uh, they had a cutting board. Okay. And I said, well, we're going to restore that. We're going to, you know, create a, a new cutting board. And I said, how long? And he said, I don't know. He said, but I'll tell you this much. Look for the uh, the knife marks on the metal edge. Huh. And so we did sure enough. And uh, we know exactly how long that was. And so he dulled a lot of blades just cutting into that. One cook per time in there. You didn't walk in. You ask for permission just because it's so small, mm -hmm. and a good cook, he is you know like a like a robot moving, 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 and he would set the platters on the fold down table. That's another interesting difference. Being electric boat uh, private yard, we don't have the pass through here, right? Uh, because our griddles are after on the after bulkhead uh, Portsmouth boats, the griddles are forward, so you can have this pass through. But for here, we have a fold down table in the entry to the galley, which is also a good thing to keep the, you know, the... Uh, keep everybody keep out. out. Uh, but they would put the platters there, and then the uh, mess cranks would come. And, and of course, I'm told that the, the food platters stopped here first. This is the chief's table. Then went to those tables, and then where Libby is sitting is, the, is known as Starvation Corner, uh, because often the first and, and sometimes even the second meat platter showed up empty there. So those poor guys were the last to get fed. What food would you miss if you joined the submarine service? Let us know in the comment section down below. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate your support. Consider supporting the ongoing restoration of USS Cod. Their donation link is in the description below, as is a link to their YouTube channel if you want to learn more about Cod's history. You can support Battleship New Jersey by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find about us and our museum. Thanks for watching.